Hello everyone. Today we are going to do a problem based on influence lines diagrams. Let us read the question one time. For the beam shown in the figure, draw the influence lines for the following movement at F, vertical reactions at F, D and B, shear force at C and E, shear force and bending movements at a section, 1 meter right of D and 2 meter left of D, shear force to the left of B and movement at B. In this beam, there are two internal hinges. In the point C and in the point E, there are internal hinges. About the internal hinges, we need to find the number of segments. Here there are three segments A, B, C, C, D, E and E, F. You can see that here I have given different colors for the segments. First we are going to draw the ILD for the movement at F. From the point F, we have to remove MF and we have to apply unit rotation. You can see that I have applied unit rotation in the anti-clockwise direction. So the segment FE rotates like this by unit E. In the point E there is a hinge. It will go downwards. The segment CDE will go like this. In the point C there is a hinge. It will go upwards and the segment ABC will go like this. Now let us see the first rule. The segments should remain straight. Because of this rule only, I have given different colors to the segments. You can see that all of the segments are straight. They are not curved like this. And they are not bent like this. For example, we can take the segment CDE. You can see that it rotates as a straight line. You cannot separate CD and DE. CD goes like this and DE goes like this. It is not correct. It must go in the straight line. Now let us see the second rule. The vertical displacement in the supports will be zero. In the point EF, we have removed MF, but there is still the vertical reaction RF. In the point D, there is vertical reaction. RD. In the point B also there is vertical reaction RB. If there are vertical supports the displacement will be zero. You can see that they are zero. In the point F we have applied unit rotation. Because of that FE went like this and the hinge goes downwards. Then the segment EDC can go like this but it did not go this way. In the point D, the displacement is zero. That is why the segment EDC goes like this and the hinge goes upwards. The segment CBA did not go like this because in the point B, the displacement is zero. That is why the segment CBA goes this way. We need to find this height. Let us take this triangle. Let us keep the height as H. In this triangle, let us apply tan formula. Tan 1 will be equal to H upon 3. The angle is unit T. This is very small. So we can take tan unit T is approximately equal to unit T. So instead of tan unit T, we can apply unit T. In this way for H, we will get 3. So this height is 3. To save the time, no need to apply tan formula. We can directly take the height as this distance. These two angles will be same. Using that concept, we can find this height. For the distance of 3, the height is 3. So for 3, it is 3. But we need the height at the distance of 4. So we have to multiply with 4. In this way, we are getting 4. These two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. For the distance of 4, the height is 4. But we need the height at the distance of 2. In this way we are getting the height as 2. 
This is the ILD for the movement at EF. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the vertical reaction at EF. We have to remove the vertical reaction RF and we have to apply unit displacement at EF. It should be applied upwards. You can see that the segment FE remains horizontal. Let us see the third rule. There will be no rotation in the fixed support unless given unit rotation. In the previous step, we have removed MA and applied unit rotation. So FE went like this way. Right now, we are not applying any unit rotation. We are just giving unit displacement. That is why FE remains horizontal. The hinge in the point E will go upwards and the segment EDC will go like this and the hinge in the point C go downwards and the segment CBA will go like this. Now let us see the second rule one more time. The vertical displacement in the supports will be zero unless given unit displacement. In the point F, we have removed RF and we have applied unit displacement. But at D and B, there are still the vertical reactions. So in these two points, the displacement will be zero. That is why the segment EDC goes this way and the segment CBA goes this way. If this is unity, this also will be unity. These two angles are same. Using that, we can find this height. For the distance of 3, the height is 1. So for 3, it is 1. But we need the height at the distance of 4. So we have to multiply with the 4. In this way, we will get 4 upon 3. These two angles are same. Using that, we can find this height. For 4, the height is 4 upon 3. But we need the height at the distance of 2. In this way, we will get the height as 2 upon 3. This is the ILD for the vertical reaction in the point F. Now let us draw the ILD for the vertical reaction at D. We need to remove RD and we have to apply unit displacement at D. We know that the segment EDC will remain straight and rotate as whole. There can be confusion why it can rotate like this. If it rotates like this, the hinge will come upwards and the segment EF should go like this. We know that there will be no rotation in the fixed support unless given unit rotation. We have not given any unit rotation in the point EF, but here it rotates by this angle. So this is not correct. That is why EDC goes like this. In the point E, the displacement should be zero because the segment FE will not rotate. We know that there will be no vertical displacement in the supports unless given unit displacement. In the point B, still there is RB. So the displacement will be zero. That is why CBA follows this way. We need to find this height. For the distance of 3, the height is 1. But we need the height at the distance of 7. So we have to multiply with the 7. In this way, we will get the height as 7 upon 3. These two angles are same. Using that, we can find this height. For the distance of 4, the height is 7 upon 3. But we need the height at the distance of 2. In this way, we will get 7 upon 6. This is the ILD for the vertical reaction at D. Now let us draw the ILD for the vertical reaction at B. We need to remove RB and we have to apply unit displacement at B. Here also we will have confusion. Why cannot the segment CBA rotates this way? If it rotates this way, the hinge in the point C will go upwards. The segment CDE will go like this and the segment EF will go like this. Now in the segment EF there is a rotation. We know that there will be no rotation in the fixed support. So this one is not possible. Also we should not disturb CDE because if CDE goes this way, 
EF will go this way. So in the point EF there is a rotation but it is not possible. Suppose it goes like this. EF will go like this. Here also rotation. This is also not possible. So if you make any change to CDE, EF will be changed. So we should not touch CDE. It should be remained as it is. That is why in this point the displacement ends. For the distance of 4, the height is 1. But we need the height at the distance of 6. For the height we will get 1.5. This is the ILD for RB. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force at C. We need to give relative displacement of unity. Left side downwards and on the right side upwards. But on the right side we can't give the displacement. We know that if we give any change to the segment CDE, EF also will change. But it is not possible. In the point EF there will be no rotation and there will be no displacement. So we should not touch CDE and EF. Only on the left side we can give the displacement. The segment CBA will rotate like this. In the point B there is RB. So the displacement is zero. That is why the segment CBC go this way. Since only one side is displacing, the displacement will be unity. These two angles are same. Using that concept we can find this height. This is the ILD for the shear force in the point C. Now let us draw the ILD for the shear force in the point E. In the point E, we have to give relative displacement of unity on the left side downwards and on the right side upwards. There will be no change in the segment EF because there is no rotation in the point EF. The segment EDC will go this way. In the point C, there is a hinge. It will move upwards and the segment ABC will follow this way. Since the displacement occurs on only one side, the displacement will be unity. These two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. These two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. This is the ILD for the shear force in the point E. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force and bending movement at a section 2 meter left of D. Let us keep this point as G. We know that right now there are three segments, but we need to find the shear force and BM in the point G. In this case, we have to split the segment CDE into two parts, CG and GDF. Here you can see that for CG, I have given different color. Right now there are four segments, ABC, CG, GDE and EF. First let us draw the ILD for the shear force at G. We should not touch GDE because if you make any changes to GDE, EF also will change. On the left of G, CG will go like this. It remains horizontal because we are not giving any rotation to G. We are just applying displacement. The hinge in the point C will go downwards and the segment ABC will go like this. If this is 1, this also will be 1. These two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. This is the ILD for the shear force in the point G. Now let us draw the ILD for the movement at G. We need to give the unit rotation like this. On the right side we cannot rotate. We know that if we rotate GDE, we have to rotate EF also. So for GDE and EF, there is no change. For the reference of rotating, you can see this arrow. The segment GC will rotate like this by unity. The hinge in the point C will go downwards and the segment ABC will follow like this. The angle is unity. So if this distance is 2, this height also should be true. These two angles are same. Using that concept we can find this height. This is the ILD for the movement at G. 
Now we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force and bending moment at your section 1 meter right of D. We have to split the segment CDE into two parts CDH and HE. You can see that for HE I have changed the color. Now there are four segments ABC, CDH, HE and EF. Now let us draw the ILD for the shear force at H. We have to give relative displacement of unity. Left side downwards and on the right side upwards. The segment EF will not rotate. It will remain as it is. No change. Because of this HE will rotate like this. In the point E the displacement will be zero. We know that in EF there will be no rotation. Because of this, CDH will go like this and the hinge will go upwards and the segment ABC will go like this. We know that why these two segments follow this way because in the point D and the point B the displacement is zero. Totally this height will be unity. To find this height we can use the formula A upon L. Here A is 1 and L is 3. So it is 1 upon 3. To find this height we can use the formula B upon L. Here B is 2 and L is 3. These two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. Then these two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. This is the ILD for the shear force in the point H. Now let us draw the ILD for the movement in the point H. In the point H we have to apply unit rotation like this. Because of this H E will rotate like this and CDH will rotate like this. The hinge in the point C will go downwards and ABC will follow that. In the segment EF there will be no change. We know that in the points D and B the displacement will be zero. That is why the segment CDH follows this way and the segment ABC follows this way. In the point H we have applied unity rotation. That means this angle is unity. We can find this height by using the formula AB upon L. Here A is 1, B is 2. So 1 into 2 upon 3. So we will get 2 upon 3. These two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. And these two angles are same. Using that we can find this height. This is the ILD for the moment at H. We are going to draw the ILD for the shear to the left of B and the moment at B. We have to split the segment ABC into two parts AB and BC. You can see that for AB I have given different color. First let us find the shear to the left of B. On the left side we have to give unit displacement. We know that on the left side we usually keep downwards. The segment AB will go like this. This is the ILD for the shear force to the left of B. Now let us draw the ILD for the movement at B. We have to give unit rotation in the point B like this. We cannot rotate on the right of B. If we rotate BC it will go like this. The hinge will come downwards and CDE will go like this. And then EF will go like this. We know that in F there will be no rotation. So this is not possible. We can only rotate the segment AB like this. We know that if this distance is 2. This height also will be 2. This is the ILD for the movement in the point B. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.